Hello, crafty friends. I'm Sandy of Lolly and Sand, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Ontario, Canada. Uh, today, we are going to be using the Alpha Best Bundle. This might be one you've overlooked in the catalog. Um, you will find it on page 115. I looked it up. So what we have here is a photopolymer set, which means it's clear. And you've got the entire alphabet. You have numbers, characters, lots of characters, stars, flowers. There's the um, hashtag and the at sign. And then these cute little pieces here. We're going to be using this one today. I love the little dotted line. It makes, well, when you see the card, it, like, it just looks so fresh and clean. And that's what I like. Everything you see here today that I'm using is available in my online store. Um, anyway, so here's the little punch, and I'll show you how that works in a few minutes once we're stamping. Um, what else can I tell you about this? Oh, Celebration is still on, and it is on until the 31st of this month, August of 2022. All right, let's bring in our colors today. We've got quite the palette. Let's go this way. Okay, because this is photopolymer, I'm going to be stamping on my Stampin' Pierce mat. Uh, in the past, I've said, use a magazine, use a stack of paper, use whatever. And I found that that I'm not getting the clearest images. So this, it is, it's foam, but it's a nice dense foam. So it doesn't get mm, smushed. I don't know if that's the right word. Anyway, I'm going to mix this up a little bit from the original. I should say originals. I've been having problems with my phone. <laughs> it turns out that um, um, the capacity was full. How easy is that? All right, so, oh, I should tell you the colors we're using. That would be handy. Okay, so saffron, pool party, blushing bride, flirty flamingo, and soft sea foam. I'm going to be using memento black ink. Now, if you're wondering why is this upside down, that's because that's the way I store it. Um, with this kind of stamp pad, you want to store them upside down so the ink stays at the top. Alrighty, let's make sure you can see everything here and we'll get our shapes. Now, the other thing I wanted to tell you is that I find it really important to use the right sized stamps. And when I say that, I don't mean that. When I say that, I mean use the right sized um, stamp block. Okay, the acrylic block. That's appropriate for the size of the stamp you're using. We have some really big stamping blocks and they they range from this tiny little size up to like a full sheet. Uh, I didn't have enough of block A for all the letters, so I added in a couple of block B's. Okay, so anyway, we've got that stamped. And let's bring in our letters. Have I got them all? I do. Uh, anyway, I'm just getting over a really lovely cold. I haven't had a cold in so long. My grandson got the cold, and inevitably, you know what happens. Grandma gets the uh, gets the cold as well. That's because we're so huggy. And I think also that we don't know that we're sick before we're sick. All right, so we're spelling out the word hello. Oh. The reason I'm rearranging this, well, I'll tell you in a second. Because I had such difficulties <clears throat> with my phone, it was allowing me to record videos up to like seven minutes. So I've actually done this video several times. I thought it looked like there was a bump on that. I just needed to check it. If you notice here, this is what I mean about using the appropriate size block. I've actually got ink down the side here. Now we're not stamping the whole page. There. I wanted to make, I have to be quiet every once in a while so I can concentrate when I'm trying to get into a specific little block like this. Cool. All right, let's move those aside. Let's move this aside. Okay, and we'll bring in the punch. 
So here's your little punch. In case you're not familiar with Stampin' Up! punches, we store them this way. They will stack. I can see what the what the picture is, so I know that this is one of my... It's a tiny little... Hmm, I'm not even sure what they're called. Probably the alphabet punch. And then we, we work them upside down so we can see what we're doing. What I like to do is hold, hold it in place and then take a look all the way around just to make sure I'm stamping or punching. Well, beautiful. We keep those scraps. So this is a great card for scraps. Great card. You just need to have something to hang on to. And if you don't, use a post-it note to hold the paper if the piece is too small. All right. So I've actually punched out all of these, so we'll set that aside. Because I've done the video, um, what did I say? I don't even know how many times. <laughs> By the looks of the, the number of samples I have around, quite a few. Alrighty, so the next thing I want to show you is this. So these are from, let me just get the name again. It was fresh in my mind before I caught the cold. Uh, seasonal label dies. So you might be thinking, well, they're Christmas dies. Yes, they probably are, but guess what? You can use them for other things, especially you've got greenery, you've got these pieces. Great for sentiments, or in my case, great for a background. This one, and you've got this. This is what I used as well. I will be featuring this set in another video uh, further down the line. All right. Just a great set. So those are the seasonal label dies. So what I did is I took craft paper. I just I had scraps and just die cut that. That's going to be in the background. And this piece, I didn't want it to be the full length. The word hello doesn't take up quite this much space. And uh, so what I did is I ran it through on a scrap of basic white. And then I put it back through again, took out the piece. So this piece here is gone. And all I did was move this, hang on, move this back. There's little groove lines on this. I don't know if you can see that, that are really easy to follow. And then I ran it through again, thus making it smaller. I've done this part. So, that aside. And I've glued them because I went, this is a lot of gluing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> for all that we do here. Alrighty. They were really easy to glue, by the way. Just I just lined them up with uh, the groove line here. And you can choose if you want spaces or to put them right up against each other. And I left just a tiny little space. Alrighty. The next thing is, if you haven't seen this folder, this is the Leaf Fall folder. And it's, it's kind of cool. I'll show you the piece up, that I've already embossed. It has beautiful, beautiful leaves all over. And I like the way, like, especially this one, look, it, you can, it looks like it's actually falling. So I chose to do it this way. Um, I was right over here when I put it through the machine. You can put it whatever way you want, whatever way, run it through whatever direction. Maybe you want it like this and you'll have this corner empty and this corner empty. Entirely up to you, but it is a really cool, cool embossing folder, which you can also color and then run your paper through and it will, um, it will show up here. And to color it, you can use your sponge daubers, uh, you can use your blending brushes, you can use a sponge, whatever you happen to have at home. So that is a 3D folder as well, so you know you're getting a beautiful, deep impression. So this piece, well, let's get the base and we'll go from there. So this is the base and it's basic white, just your regular, not the thick. And I have cut it to four and a quarter by 11 and scored it at five and a half. So at the halfway mark. And I'm just going to give that a wee burnish. There we go to get that flatter. And then this piece, also just the regular basic white, this is three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. I wanted it to be smaller than my usual, just taking an eighth off. I thought that would look really pretty. I believe, nope, see, I, 
this is, it really helps to look at your sample before you get cutting. Alrighty, so I'm going to bring in my Pool Party uh, Sheer Ribbon. And all I want to do is I'm going to take a piece and just go straight across. And I'm going to tuck it in behind it. That's why I'm glad I didn't glue it first. I have been known to glue first and think later. It's true. And the other thing I want to use is my... Does this have a direction? It does. It says Stampin' Up! right there. This is a silicone mat. If you've ever listened to Lisa Curcio from the... She's a unit... Um, demonstrated from the United States. She talks about this all the time and you will save your desktop from being a big gluey mess because we get messy already so I'm just gonna flip that over and I've got my take your pick tool to take the glue dot now, I like to put this ribbon around I saw this ages ago by a demonstrator and it just stops it from unrolling I thought you are one brilliant lady the person who thought this thought of this <laughs> Oh, now it's stuck to my finger. This happens a lot. I stick them back to my finger. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to get it as straight as I can. And then the beauty with glue dots is you can always adjust. So I'm just going to put that right about there and then we'll eyeball it. It's up too high on that side, just a little bit. Not terrible. I'm liking it. So while we're here, I'm not sure if this is the right one. Let's see if this is working. Oh, it is. Good. This is one of my numerous Tombow multi-liquid purpose glue. I like to use this because I desperately need wiggle time. Alrighty, I'm going to go right about there. With that wiggle time, it gives me a moment to... Now, you can't be super off or you'll get glue trails we don't want that. Alrighty, and down you go. Next thing, so I'm going to bring this back in. So for this, I went ahead and, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to go ahead and glue it. <laughs> I'm ahead of myself. Alrighty, and this time I'm going to use stamp and seal. I use a variety of products depending on what I'm doing. I'm going to put that right under there. About there, let's find out over a bit. I want to somewhat center this over this. This doesn't need to be centered, just this does. Okay, so that should be good. Up a bit and down. That's good and stuck. Next, I have the Simply Elegant Trim. And I saw this, you know, I don't think this is new, but I only, I only saw this on a tip from um, Martin Stone from Martin's Mayhem. Um, he's a demonstrator in the UK, is make a little snip. Because I think you've heard me say, oh, it unwound, it unwound, and tuck it. Not new, but good to have a reminder that it's that's something we can do. Alrighty, so for this, I'm just going to let it go wonky. And I'm going to use my stamp and seal again. I don't, you can use glue dots as well. It's just for me, I don't exactly know where the ribbon is going to end. I just wanted to see what end was up. So that's the O in hello. Um, measurements, not really measuring. I just want wonky. Now there's a couple ways of doing this. I could just put this on here and just make the loops like so, so I can see what I'm doing. Oh, no, I want more of a tail showing. All right, so we'll make a loop. And a loop and a loop. <coughs> Excuse me if I cough. I'm, I was hoping I could make it through the video without coughing. It's like the last little bits of the cold. Nice and wonky the way I like it. And for this piece, I'm going to leave this here and cut right there. Now, I kind of like to have a second tail here. So I'm just going to cut a little bit. And just attach it like so. It's pretty cool. I, I like when it's just kind of all over the place. All right, next thing is the dimensionals. And I'm using the large. If you have the smaller ones, you can use those too. All right, so we want to pop it up. One thing you want to avoid is putting your dimensional on top of your ribbon or trim. 
So what I can do is do the sneaky sneak and cut it. And I think we can place another piece right in there. Beauty. And then we'll take that off. Now I am going to be putting this right on top of the ribbon. So let's hope that it actually sticks. Okie doke. And there we go. We're getting there. We're not done. Now you might be looking at this and going, uh, Sandy can't center. <laughs> and you're right, but I, I purposely left this longer than the other spots. Just check to see how we're doing here. Alrighty. All right. So the next thing, because there's more, is I wanted to make a bow. So now my every time I watch someone make a bow, a bow, if they're right-handed, I, I it just looks foreign to me. So I'm sorry if this looks foreign to you. It's because I, I make them left-handed apparently. So I just like you just make your bunny ears or wrap it around your thumb. That's one way. Here's your bunny ears. Bunny ears. Make them a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm doing. Alrighty, bunny ears, wrap, go under. That's the tricky part with this is getting it through, which is why I like to use my thumb. Or we'll do it. Let's really exaggerate it. And through you go. You have to leave a big enough opening that you're not struggling. And then grab those ends and pull. And then you can just make your bow as small as you like. Okay, so the other method is fold it, go around your thumb. So I folded the, folded the ribbon in half. So this is going to be one of the tails. And this was one bunny ear. Around my thumb, and I'm going to make a bunny ear and put it right through here. I find that easier. Whoever showed me that, thank you. Because <laughs> I, I think that's fabulous. Alrighty, so this is really exaggerated as well. So we're going to pull those. <gasps> Not too far. Almost pulled it right out. And then finally, let's pull that bow tight so we can work on it a bit. I like to have little bows, long tails. Other people like big, big bows and and big tails, not me. I think I'm small. I don't want the bow to overtake the card at all. All right, happy with that, so we'll cut that. I'm not making long tails this time, though, by the way. The reason for that is we're not done. Okay, so that was the pool party sheer ribbon, and now I'm gonna bring in the glittered burgundy ribbon. I just wanted a little more sparkle, so take a peek look at that isn't that pretty and I I think it just goes beautifully but on its own it doesn't really show up super well on the card so I'm just gonna fold it in half that's probably about what four inches I'm just gonna fold that in half cut a tail and then bring in the glue dots again I may have to cut those down a little shorter that's about the halfway mark right there glue dots this is why your take the take your pick tool comes in so handy. Place it and fold it. So I'm just going to slip this under here a bit, just for some added sparkle. We'll see how far that will go. So I think I have a dimensional, yeah, right there. All right, I will cut those after, cut the tails shorter in a bit. All right, one more glue dot for the back. Now, the other thing you could do to make that probably easier is put the glue dot on the paper. I would love to know what you think of the card. It really comes together quickly. Probably quicker than I'm demonstrating. But this is the first day I've done anything in days other than, you know, lots of water. Lots of water. Good food, back to bed. And it wasn't it wasn't COVID I tested. It's hard to get it when you haven't been anywhere. Oh, I just noticed it's on my finger again. That happens a lot. Okay. 
liken it, liken it. When you're done and you find that this is still moving, there's a trick, which I'm going to show you. So in this case, I'm just, I just grabbed my minis, midi dimensionals. I'm going to take the backing off right away, right away, right away. Get a different one. <laughs> when in doubt, there we go. Okay, and you can slide them underneath and not be seen. Just like that, it's sticking. I love, I love tricks and tips. We're not done. No, because we need some more bling. So these are the adhesive backed seasonal sequins, which might have you thinking Christmas. And it probably tells me they're in the um, mini catalog. All right, these are the colors you get. I thought about using this and then I thought, no, a little bit more than I want. Not the green, though that's, and not the gold, because I've already got silver here. Not that I mind silver and gold together. I actually really like them. All right, so I'm just gonna be kind of random, just like leaves falling, just like the leaves. These are so pretty. Because they've got, they're iridescent, so they're gonna pick up all the colors around. <clears throat> Let's put another one right here. Nope, not right there. I don't like that. Nope. I decided that was the wrong spot at the last second there. I'll go here. Okay. I don't know why I'm whispering. <laughs> you can't hear me when I whisper. That's that part. And then I'm going to bring out, you know, my super ugly, look at the mess I've made piece of paper. You know, it just tells you one thing, that we're not paper wasters here. Okay, and you're going to need a block. I have my Winka Stella. Z. Yep, plural. And actually, I'm going to grab a clean block. I was going to use the inky ones, and I didn't want to get ink on my finger. So, well, I think we've done this before. This is, the, this is the new one, I can tell, because the lid is clear. So it's going to take a little bit and put it right here. You don't need a lot. Don't less is more. You can always get more. And then just pick it up with this one's almost dry. And then just add your shimmer. I won't keep you here while I do the entire card. I can see it though landing on the. I can see it on the the letters already. So I'll move up this way. You can't really see where it's going unless there's a good light. All right. Let's say we're done. I'll clean that. For now, that's half a clean. And then, oh, I forgot to say, stick around to the end because I have another card to show you. There's the card. There's the original. Oh, yeah, I was going to cut those a little bit. I still might. I might move that in just a tad too. I don't want it showing quite that much. Now, so that's using this one with the dots. Oh, I hear the doggies. Now, this is one we did in a team meeting. Um, we were given the dimensions, but nothing else. So you finish it yourself. So it's this really cool card that opens like this. So my card says, this is my ballet band, and I've used one of the um, papers from the Design a Daydream. And the word love, this is so sparkly. So the outside it says love, on the inside it says you. Ah, that's quite the contraption. Apparently you can watch this on um, Rachel Tessman. Rachel Tessman has done a video and you can check that out. So there's that card and there's that. Just wanted to show the different ways you can use this. Now I do have, I was playing a bit more with some more of the um, I think it was this one yeah and I have this page where I've done a bunch of well that's could say you if I had the you the O the O not the U it looked kind of Halloween like so I didn't want it really on this particular card some blending and some water spraying and such okay my friends wow I think we talked about everything mm-hmm 
So that's my video for today. Thank you so much for watching. All the special links will be are in the the um, comments below. And if you are in Canada and are looking to purchase some products, I would be very happy to be your demonstrator and help you along your creative path. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.